Good morning, Oklahoma. Welcome to Cow Calf Corner. This week, we follow up the topic of what a good bull should be worth in 2026 in response to a producer question of what are the pros and cons of leasing bulls. Why do we get into this question? We're in a robust time in the cattle market. Purchase of new seed stock can be expensive. Do we actually save anything potentially leasing? Well, there's definitely some upside if we think about not having that capital expenditure up front of purchasing the bull. And then as we look through, generally, since we only are gonna use a lease bull during the breeding season, whether that's 45 to 90 days, whatever number we elect to lease the bull for, we're gonna save some money during the rest of the year. Think about it as the off season relative to feed, vet costs, labor, potentially even facilities to keep that bull or our herd bulls safe and secure when they're not breeding cows. And so bull ownership, thinking outside the breeding season, realistically has got a cost of several hundred dollars a year, which we potentially save if we can do a bull lease. In the current market, bull leases or the breeding fee part of this typically start at about $25 a day. That's gonna vary based on the quality of the bull and particularly the genetic potential of the bull. Better bulls are gonna be worth more to lease. Some breeders may structure this by the month. They may structure it by the breeding season, but let's use $25 a day as a starting point thinking about that breeding fee. Second thing we're gonna get into is some sort of a mortality insurance policy on that bull. You are going to have to take out some sort of an insurance policy that is payable to the owner of the bull should something happen and the bull die during the lease. I recently priced a mortality policy. Right now for a 60 day policy, we could insure at three and a half percent of the value of the bull, a 90 day policy is right at 4%. Uh, the other thing we've got to address here is herd health. We have to think about this from both sides of the equation. If we're gonna lease a bull, we're better off leasing a virgin yearling bull so that we know we're not potentially gonna bring something into our cow herd. On the back side of this lease, at the very least, we're gonna need a negative test for trick before that bull can be returned to the seed stock vendor that actually leased us the bull. So, bottom line, what are we looking at here? We'll work through an example. If we wanted to lease a 15 month old bull, at that age, we'd expect him to be capable of servicing about 15 cows during a 60 day breeding season. So a 60 day lease at $25 a day, we got a breeding fee in here of $1,500. If we value the bull at $10,000, we're gonna take a 60 day mortality policy out on him at about three and a half percent. We can add in another $350. We're gonna have a trick test at the end of this. Let's just ballpark that at $75. And the other thing we need to consider that is a normal part of a bull lease that I haven't addressed yet, is typically there's some sort of an agreement on a repayment to regain weight that a bull loses during that breeding season. Right now, let's say that we agree to a dollar a pound cost to gain to regain whatever weight is lost. And both leaser and leasee need to address this up front and reach some sort of an agreement as to a reasonable weight loss on that bull. So. Let's say the bull loses 100 pounds during the lease, we've agreed to a cost of regain of $1 a pound. We're gonna add another dollar into the cost of that bull lease. We're looking at a little over $2,000 to lease a bull for 60 days. If that bull covers 15 cows or heifers, that pencils out to about $135 for female service. How does that compare to if we are purchasing bulls? Well. Let's just assume that bulls last until about the age of six and service about 140 females during their lifetime as a herd bull. So if a bull is purchased for $5,600, that equates to about $40 per female service. If we jump up to a bull purchased for 14,000, that's about $100 per female purchase. So if we look at it on that basis, it is le less costly to actually purchase the bull. So I encourage producers, do the math, think through the pros and cons. Are you better off trying to lease? Are you better off trying to own? If you're interested in a lease, I would be reaching out to seed stock vendors at this time of year, well in advance of the breeding season, 
to make sure that they've got bull availability and interest in leasing bulls. As always, thanks for joining us on Cow Calf Corner.